some of you may know me, some of you don't. I go by the name of Haneli. My surname is Prinsloo. I absolutely hate the name Joanna. <laughs> but what can I say? I was blessed with that. I'll live and die with it. But please, my name is Haneli. Right. So, you know, when the judge president requested me to address you on what the aspirin training, um, judges training meant to me, I thought to myself, where do I start? Where do I start? Because um, this course uh, started a whole new chapter in my life, both in my professional and in my personal life. And um, it has been such a journey for me. Uh, but not only for me, because I don't stand alone, it was also for my family. Because you need to understand that this is not just about you. Professionally about you, yes, but you cannot do this without the support of your family. And, and I cannot tell you today what support I received from my husband in this. And I will elaborate on that a little bit later. But, you know, for your family to, to um, let you go on a, on a course like this, there's a lot of ladies here, and I'm so glad to see ladies here. It, it really warms my heart. But you have children. That, uh, that need your attention. You might have small children that need your attention. And when you're here, you need to be here 110%. You can't, can't give half measures. So there is sacrifice involved in that. And I will talk a little bit uh, about that uh, later on uh, as well. Now, as you, as you know, I had the distinct privilege to uh, take part in the first intake of the Aspirin Judges Training Program that was spearheaded by <coughs> the Honorable Judge President during December 2015. Uh, we were a group of magistrates consisting about 10 magistrates, um, among whom the Chief Magistrate was, and then also a research assistants, and I'm so glad to see that there are again research assistants here today. Um, you will find a lot of assistance from the research assistants because they are, in, if I can call it like that, in the thick of things. Um, a lot of the, the, the concepts that you're going to be presented with is going to be foreign to you. Um, so, you know, Ask Charlotte, she will assist you. She will. Um, we, we had the um, uh, benefit of having Lotta Ambunda with us and um, uh, Hassan Engelbrecht and Sebastian and then also um, uh, Nuncia. And our, <laughs> our dear heart, Miss uh, Yvette Hesselman, sitting at the back. So, uh, everybody benefits from this training, not just the magistrates that are here, but also the research assistants. <coughs> now, um, when we received the, the, the notice of the Aspirin Judges Training, it was about in March 2015, um, it was evident that it related to civil process, not criminal. Uh, and I must confess I was skeptical. Uh, skeptical regarding the possibility of being uh, considered for an appointment in the High Court. And the reason was quite simple, as it is generally assumed that the route to appointment in the High Court is via private practice. Now we all know also that magistrates have previously been elevated to the High Court and even the Supreme Court bench. Uh, and none of these honorable justices need introduction, but uh, I will name them. We all know that the Honorable Justice Mahinga, who is in our SCA, our highest court, in the Supreme Court, uh, Justice Liebenberg, Justice Sibuleka, Justice Shibute, Justice Usiku, Justice Unengu, these are all uh, 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 justices that, uh, that came from the magistracy and um, they paved the way uh, for the rest of the magistracy to the High Court. But you also know that these honorable justices serve in a criminal stream. So you can surely understand my skepticism um, when I attended this course. So when our group was addressed by the honorable DCJ or the JP, 
um, as you would. Uh, he made it quite clear to us that a participant should not regard their participation in this program as a guarantee for future appointment. And I'm quite sure he said this to you this morning as well. Um, and I therefore approached the aspirant judges training without any expectations, but decided that if I do this, I will give it my all. Now today I want, you to, I want to ask you not to be as skeptical and maybe cynical as what I was at the time, because we all know now that it is possible for a magistrate to be appointed to the High Court bench in the civil stream. It can be done. Um, you today on a new uh, on the brink on the brink of a new chapter in your career. Aspirin judges training is not just another workshop or just another course where you will leave your course material uh, after the conclusion of the course somewhere in your office and forget about it. If we are honest with one another, and I listened, I only came in at the tail end of. Um, what the DCJ said to you. Um, but if we are honest with one another today, we must admit that civil work in the magistracy is not your biggest priority in the greater scheme of your work. All the emphasis is on criminal justice, and I would venture a guess to say that 80% of the time you spend your time in court in dealing with criminal matters. Uh, of the participants sitting here today, um, you in all probability will be able to count the number of civil cases finalized in the past year or so. On your one hand, maybe two if you're lucky, if you see it in Ventuk in civil court, you might be able to use two hands. But in other, other jurisdictions, I'm quite confident that it will be less because um, the attorneys tend not to litigate in the lower court. They would issue summons, they would uh, obtain default judgment, and that's about where it stops. Even in busy uh, jurisdictions like Swakopmund, Walfish Bay, even Kietmans uh, and Ventuk, uh, maybe with the exception, I'm not quite sure about Ventuk, uh, would have minimal cases that would be litigated from beginning to the point of judgment. Uh, and, and that is also clear. I can see uh, now that I am in, 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 in high court, how very few cases comes from the lower courts. So um, the, th the fact of the matter is that uh, I'm saying this to you just to illustrate how limited magistrates' exposure to civil work is in general. And this, to some extent, places you in a disadvantage when you, you are compared uh, with a legal, uh, legal practitioner that has a law practice that concentrates on high court litigation. And when it comes to um, running for position in the high court, you have to compete with with uh, legal practitioners that do this every day of their lives and that are uh, well acquainted with the High Court rules and practice directives, supposedly. Um, so you do, you do, you, you are at the disadvantage in that regard. But magistrates uh, have other qualities that they bring to the table. And these are qualities that will serve you very well during the course, this course and <laughs> what follows hereafter. You are here because you have the qualities of a good judicial officer. And to be a good attorney or advocate does not mean that that makes you a good presiding officer. You have a completely different approach to, to how you view a case. And you have that experience. So that is uh, experience that you need to gain from and use it during this course. Now during this course you will be exposed to subject matters which will be new to you. The High Court proceedings is re uh, removed the world apart from magistrate court proceedings, but there are overlaps in the processes as well. Uh, it will not be easy 
I can guarantee you that. But I wish to assure you that each and every one of you sitting here has the ability to successfully pass this course. And, but there's a rider on that. In order to do that, you need to commit yourself 110% to this. The commitment starts today. Uh, and in fact, if I may, it should have started when you received your uh, study guide already, uh, which you had to go through in preparation for the two or three week course awaiting you here. Uh, this course is not your stereotype course where you can sit back and relax um, and then just maybe study a little bit when the exams are due. If that is your attitude, colleagues, then you're going to be in for a big surprise. I can say this because I have first hand experience in this regard. And I can honestly tell you that in spite of my preparation in advance for the aspirin judges course, I was not prepared for what waited, awaited me when the course started. In spite of my preparation, I did not have enough insight in the High Court rules and practice directives. Uh, but that is where your competent lecturers fit in. You will not only be lectured by extremely competent advocates, you will also be lectured by senior sitting judges. And um, ask as many questions as you can. But remember, you won't be able to ask those questions if you do not know what they're talking about. You have to prepare. Um, this is not a, a fully paid three week vacation. This is hard work. And it is a, it's daily. Um, I think, um, I don't know whether the, the JP shared it with you, but um, when he uh, opened our course, he said to us, he has a set of rules in his car, next to his bed, in his office, at the farm. Everywhere he goes, he has a set of rules. If he have a few minutes, he would read. And it's not only the rules, it's the practice directives as well, because that goes hand in hand. If you don't read, you will not be able to successfully complete this course. The knowledge and the notes that the lecturers and the judges will impart with will not be only be extremely valuable for you now, but also when you return to your duty station in the months to come. Because you will be able to use it every day in your work as a civil magistrate. Um, what you will be taught here will reinforce your knowledge and your skills. Remember that you do not know the, income, uh, the outcome of this course and what it will bring for you. For some, attending this court, of course, it may pave the way to an appointment uh, to the High Court bench. If not now, maybe a little bit later. But even if it does, that, it does not uh, mean at the end of the day that you are appointed to the High Court, this court will still be, of course will still be of value to you as you will be able to apply the civil, uh, what you le uh, learn here in the civil court where you are seated. Uh, that is with exclusion of the High Court uh, Act rules and practice directives. Um, for you who might be appointed, this course will lay the foundation on which you will build your career in the High Court. Uh, I knew nothing of the High Court rules or the practice directives when I started preparing for this course. I downloaded the required uh, reading material as directed by Ms. Lorraine. Um, but still, when I started looking, when I, when I, when I began pre to prepare, I saw that our office didn't even have a commentary on the High Court rules. And I don't think that SWACOP is the exception to the rule. I think that is in most offices the case. So I had to approach some of the legal practitioners in town and borrow books in order to prepare. But I decided at that point already that I will not arrive here unprepared. I will prepare come what may. Uh, if, however, if it wasn't for Advocate Shimming Chase and Advocate Basingwhite, who was our lecturers during that course, I would never have had the comprehension of the High Court rules and the practice directives. 
judicial case management, the, the JP referred to it this morning, and pardon me if I refer to him as the JP, um, in this setup he will be the DCJ, but in the High Court um, being the boss, we will refer to him as the JP. Uh, the, the, the JP just touched on case management, and I think that is probably the most foreign concept that you will deal with. All of you have done trials. You know how to do a trial. You know how to control a court. You know how to uh, deal with objections. But when it comes to case management, that is a, that is a, a, a um, horse of a completely different color. That is not something that we uh, deal with in a lower court. This is not your ordinary motion court. I cannot tell you how much work is involved in that. Um, the, the, uh, the rules is of great assistance in, um, in, in dealing with this. Um, but when you deal with that during the, uh, during the course of your lectures, um, listen carefully to what the lecturers say to you. And uh, then go back to your rules and your practice directors and try and understand it. And if you don't, come back tomorrow and tell them you don't understand. Because as I say, this is not something that we deal, we have dealt with in the lower judiciary ever. Uh, so I am, I am confident that once you leave here after these three weeks, you will be well acquainted with uh, judicial case management um, or the theory thereof. Because let me tell you, theory is one thing. Applying it is still something completely different. Um, when I started applying it, and um, after my, not even after my appointment, when I was appointed as acting, I realized how little I know. You know, we're sitting here and we're confident in our knowledge, but colleagues, you need to be open-minded about this, and you need to realize that, unfortunately, we are a bit limited in in low, in, in in magistrate court rules and 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 in the act. There's a lot to learn. Um, so, if if I can leave one thing with you, and that is what I have realized very quickly as well, is that you must read and read and read some more. Uh, study your rules every day. Uh, make notes from the beginning. Put in flags for quick reference because you're going to need it when the exam comes. Do not know whether you're going to have a close to open book exam. Uh, but you will be informed in due course. But in your preparation for the exams, you're going to need it. Once you leave here, uh, you will have a better understanding of high court process. And you will hopefully be prepared for the challenges that await you both in your personal and in your professional life as a judicial officer. The program will give you a better appreciation of the role of the judiciary and the myriad challenges facing a judge, both on and off the bench. Armed with that education that you will receive here, you will not only be able to be prepared to serve as a judge, but also in a far better position to make an informed decision about whether to pursue a judicial career as a judge in the first place. If you're serious about advancing your career to the high court bench, know this, there's no half measures. You will have to make sacrifices. Please don't think you won't have to. Uh, sacrifices that you might not have foreseen beforehand. And this means hours and hours and hours of work. This means having less time with your family. I was acting. My acting stint was from the 1st of February 2017 until um, initially. Uh, until the end of March when it was extended, uh, until the end of June and I was um, permanently appointed as of the 1st of July. I had to commute for seven months between Swakop and Ventuk. I have two children, uh, aged then 11 and 14, um, and a very, very uh, accommodating husband who not only dealt with his work, but also looked after my children and um, see to their needs. And I only, I was literally 
a weekend mother. I made a point of going home every weekend. That was very, very important to me because after a week of being in court, having case management, having interlocutories three days a week, you need to recharge and you need to recharge with your family. Um, so I was very fortunate. But, you know, at one stage during this, this seven months, I said to my husband, you know, I just want to sit on the couch in the, in, the, in the sitting room with my feet on it and read a magazine. I can't remember when last I read a magazine or that I've, uh, I've read something other than a law, law book or law journal. Um, but those are the sacrifices that you make. And if you ask me whether it was worth it in the seven months to be away from my family and commuting between Swako and Ventuk, I will say unequivocally yes. Because the honor of being appointed as the judge of the High Court is far surpassed by the level of commitment and diligence expected from you as a judge. Many sacrifices will need to be made in your professional and your uh, 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 personal life. And uh, you have to maintain a very high level of professionalism and integrity. Uh, so to all of you that are hopeful to be appointed, I wish you well. I, um, I hope I can say I'm an example that it can be done. And if there's one thing, uh, and this was my, my hope from the beginning when I started acting, and I, I think I speak for um, acting Judge Christians as well. If there was one thing that we wanted to do was to pave the way for magistrates to the High Court, not just in the, in the criminal stream, because as I said, pointed out to you, many magistrates have been appointed to the criminal stream, but none to the civil. Um, and you must remember there is a very clear distinction at this point in time between a civil and the criminal streams. I'm referring to the, it as streams. Um, in, the, um, in the civil stream, you can be moved around between action and motion, but you will not go over to the criminal stream. So um, this, is, this is different from the time when Justice Liebenberg was appointed, for instance, where when, once you're appointed, you have to do everything. That is not the case anymore. Um, and um, maybe it's a good thing, because that gives you the opportunity to specialize. It's difficult when you are uh, this week in criminal, next week you're in civil. I also um, said to Mr. Vilikoshi this morning when we spoke, when I started acting, Judge, um, Judge Liebenberg explained it to me, he said to me, you know, criminal, criminal work um, in the High Court and everywhere else is like a crawl with full, full fences. You know, it, the elements, everything, it's set in law, in case law, it remains within the confines of the four fences. Then when you get to labor, we open the gate because now it's not as clear cut anymore. Then we come to civil and all your fences fall away. There are no fences here. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, but that, that is a challenge that you need to embrace every day. Um, so for you who are uh, successful, I really hope to see, I would love to see all of you um, as my colleagues in the High Court, but it's worth it. The time and the commitment is worth it. Remember, you are there to, to serve the people. And um, this is not just for your own benefit. This is to serve your country, it's to serve the people, and uh, make the most of the opportunity that you have here, because it will pave the way for you. This is one thing that, that we all wanted to know in advance, and, um, but at this stage you do not even know whether you have an open book or closed book. We had an open book examination, and you know sometimes it sounds easier if you have open book, but I, I really think it's harder. Uh, we, we wrote an um, a, a eight hour examination. We started at eight o'clock that morning. Uh, we wrote in the library at the Supreme Court 
I was, I had the presence of mind to bring water and something to eat. Uh, by quarter to five, they literally almost had to drag the paper out of my hand because I wasn't finished yet. And it was only 120 marks. I think it is the, 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 the longest exam that I've ever written in my life. I think attorneys will tell you that the conveyancing exam is something similar. But, um, you know, uh, you need to, I, I think in this, this case, I think the judges who's going to present some lectures is also going to propose some questions to the lecturers. So I don't think it's going to be even nearly the same as ours. So you have to keep up with everything. A bit more general about your experience. You, you, you know our world. Um, and, and, and its restrictions. And how, you know, that leap, that paradigm shift, because that, that's kind of where I'm caught at at this point. I don't know if I will be able to make that, that shift into this. You know, the, the, because like you just said, the, the, the civil <coughs> yeah, it's just a totally different ballgame. Mm. Totally. <clears throat> Mrs. Clausen, you know, I, I asked myself that question as well, and it, you are indeed right if you say that it is a paradigm shift. I can't explain it any better than what you said, but you do. You know, once you're there, uh, there is no turning around. You just have to do it. But it is a very, very big, show, uh, big move. And you know what? What I can also say to you, and, and this is one thing that I was very hesitant about, Coming from the lower court, going to the high court, is how will I be accepted? Um, am I going to be uh, seen as somebody, well, you have lesser knowledge than us, or whatever the case may be? And I can tell you, in all honesty, that the judges in the high court embraced both myself and Mrs. Uh, Christians. There was not one day that they made us feel um, unwelcome or incompetent or having less knowledge. They, in fact, and maybe I can put your mind to rest with that, um, <clears throat> we were all, uh, both myself and, 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 and acting judge um, uh, Christians was assigned a mentor of, in the form of a very experienced senior judge who, who, who you could approach at any time for guidance. And um, that really saved my life. Um, <clears throat> where you can, if you're unsure, go and talk to him. And I say him because there's no ladies apart from myself in the civil stream. Um, and they would just take your hand. Uh, they would not, uh, not at one instance did I get the impression that the senior judge is thinking this is a stupid question or you do not know what you're talking about. And because you're not left alone and just there to fend for yourself, and there is somebody to guide you. That helps a lot. And you do make that paradigm shift, because each and every one of you have that in you. Um, for me, I always said I'm a, I, I'm a career magistrate. Uh, and um, especially with the older magistrates here, this is what you do. This is in your genes. Otherwise, you would have been in private practice already. This is what you do. So, you know. Um, uh, you move, make the, 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 the change from district court to regional court. It's a higher court. But you do it because you can. You have the ability. The same applies to the high court. You can do it. Don't ever think, I don't have the ability. Because each and every one of you sitting here has the potential to be a judge. If that answers your question. Nelly? Yes, Judge, thank you. Judge, with that paradigm shift that you just asked, I just want to request you to just take us through the very first encounter with judicial case management, especially where you're coming from and the way you now find yourself being at the center as the uh, deputy chief. At the center of the process, 
when you are not the driver of it. Uh, Leader practitioners coming to you and you telling them what to do instead of them driving. Can you just take us through what you went through? No, I think that is the most difficult part of all, Nelly, because um, we, uh, in the lower courts, in, in your civil court, you tend not to be hands-on. And with the, with the um, objectives of the high court rules and uh, with case management, it's judge-driven. So initially it was very difficult for me. But what I found is preparation is key. You cannot guide um, your, your legal practitioners if you have not prepared. This means hours of preparation. I have case management on Thursday. I start preparing on Monday already. It takes me hours. At this stage, I case manage in e-justice in access of 200 cases and about 60 paper files. Uh, the thing is, and uh, let me tell you, I, I in the beginning with case management, and I still need to talk to myself before I go in there. It's a daunting thing to walk into that court and see this sea of black gowns. And you don't know what's going to come your way during the course of it, because anything can arise during the course of case management. Um, so, uh, I mean, if you go in there not being prepared, it's really like going into, it's, it's um, you know, a lion's cage because you will be ripped apart. I mean, with, in, in, with, with the greatest of respect, uh, but you need to know where you are. So you, and that brings me back to my rules. If you do not read your rules and you do not know your rules, you will not be able to case manage. So, but that was a very, very, very big shift from the lower court. Apart from the fact that it is so foreign and new, the whole process of being judge driven and I think that, um, uh, you know, especially in the beginning I was so hesitant to say, but what about this and what about this and have you seen this and have you take, taken note of that? Um, but, but you get more and more confident as you go along. Don't ever show fear. Ever, you have to be confident, um, but you can't have confidence if you're not prepared. So, uh, but I think for me, the, 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 the most difficult thing that I had to adapt to when I came to the, the, the high court was case management. Now, because we all know um, motion court, it's just like a sausage machine, it runs. This is so different. And then we get to um, uh, sanctions and um, condemnation applications and parties opposing. And so, yeah, that, that's why I say you never know what to expect. So just take something, spray it under the tongue, and you'll be OK. <laughs> It calms the nerves, you know, it, it really just take a deep breath and um, when you go in there, own it. It's your court, like it is yours now. If you go into that court, it's your court, you are in control, own it. Um, absolutely, Mrs. Clausen, you know what, I never thought that I would see the day that magistrates have the opportunity to go to the bench, the High Court bench. I started prosecuting in South Africa, and then I'm born and bred Namibia, Namibian, and, I, and in South Africa as well. I know they now have an aspirant uh, um, uh, course, or judges course, but the majority is going from the private practice. In some instances, I do understand it, because your exposure to the High Court rules is so much more. But one can never forget the potential that is in the lower courts. And, you know, in that instance, you really need to give a round of applause to the DCJ and the, DC, and, the, and, 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 and the CJ, because this is their brainchild, which uh, the, and I think um, to some extent, um, more that of the DCJ, uh, this, this, this is his brainchild and he's driving it. And that is why he is here and why is here to open it. Um, 
we must remember we're in a very small country, and uh, you know, the we have two and a half million people, uh, and the I think Yvette has in, in 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 an interview I think with the Economist said that you now that there's a misconception that. Uh, in all time, uh, that that the, the the judges will always come from the from the private practice. It is time that uh, other avenues are explored. And here you are. You have the experience. You have the ability. Just please, when you go back, if it's not your turn now, don't lose hope. Remember, some of you are still young, and. Uh, it might count against you at this point in time, uh, but stand up and be recognized during this course. And that your name is on that list. And when they are, when the, the, the CJ and the DCJ is looking at potential candidates for acting, your name must be there. It must be there. So stand up and be recognized. And, and really, it, it, um, I, I, as I already said, I can't tell you how, how um, pleased I am to say I'm from the magistracy and we are paving the way. Thank you. Thank you. This, this is so intensive um, that I think if you start at a very early age, going to the high court bench, you can be burned out at the early age. <laughs> That's the reality. Yes. That's the reality. But I don't think, as far as I know, there's a, 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 a age, a specific age. But you know, with age comes wisdom. We hope. But um, and that is why I say, even if not now, that you that that that. Uh, the uh, CJ and the DCJ is aware of you. And, you know, be, then you can be given the opportunity and with an acting stand, see how it goes. And then it will ta be taken from there.